Come on in. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about Survivor's most reckless idol holds. Last week, I looked at Survivor's ballsiest idol holds, those times when someone held onto their immunity idol and survived a dangerous vote where they were at extreme risk of going home, and they knew it. Every instinct in their body was telling them to play their guaranteed safety, but they successfully read the room, sussed out that they were not the target, and held their advantage to play another day. All were incredible plays that required incredible reads. Today is not those. Today, we're looking at Survivor's most reckless idol sits, when Survivor players definitely should have played their immunity idol, but didn't, and paid the ultimate price for it. I'll be prioritizing players who knew or should have strongly suspected that they were copping votes, but whose greed or fundamental misreading of the situation at hand did them in. From idols with an impending expiration date, to players with multiple idols, to players with regular idols with good old-fashioned bad reads. Let's dig into Survivor's most reckless immunity idol holds. At number five is Vince in Survivor Island of the Idols, who sat on his idol at final 18 and got voted out. In episode three, Vince was sent to the Island of the Idols, where he could earn an idol good for his next two tribal councils by sneaking into the other tribe's camp at night with a torch and lighting it at their campfire. In what we all should have taken as an omen of the crappy season to come, Vokai didn't even have a fire going, so Vince just took some coal back to Rob and Sandra. Eh, good enough. While Vince is away learning this crucial survivor skill, his tribe agrees to split votes between him and Karishma. Vince, because they assumed correctly that he would come back with an immunity idol, and Karishma because, you know, she's Karishma. Now there's a bit of a power struggle here where Missy wants to get all the girls and Vince in an alliance and vote out Tom instead, and that's what she sells Vince on. But when Vince talks with Karishma, ostensibly someone he's in an alliance with, she is super cagey and won't give up Tom's name. At this point, the blindside siren should be blaring in Vince's ears. At Tribal, Vince votes for Tom, still believing himself and the five women are pulling off a blindside. The five women were just not against Tom. Vince's misread and idol sit are notable to me because this wasn't a full idol he could bank to use down the line. It was good for this tribal council and his next one only, and Vince was either going to be in the power with the women or completely on the outs. Of course, Modern Survivor is very fluid and he could always bank this to use it as a fake, but him being gone for 24 hours at the Island of the Idols ahead of this vote, his own allies' non-answer to him on who to target, and the impending expiration of his idol probably should have resulted in an idol play. Ironically, Rob and Sandra's lesson for Vince on the Island of the Idols was on remaining calm under pressure, and Vince taking that to heart may well have played into him holding his idol instead of using it. I don't know, maybe Rob and Sandra should have taught him how to, like, read social situations instead of how to belly crawl. But what do I know? At number four is JT going home with an idol in his pocket at the final 16, Survivor Game Changers. I think we can all agree that JT's had some interesting gameplay in the subsequent seasons since his clean sweep win in Survivor Token Sheens. Personally, I've always held the opinion that JT in his returning seasons is basically playing with house money and taking the biggest, wildest swings he can, but there's no getting around it in Game Changers. He got played. In the round before his elimination, JT was on the receiving end of a pretty bad swap for him as the only original Nuku member on new Nuku. Nonetheless, JT managed to make inroads with Malcolm, and at a joint tribal council with Mana, new Nuku has the numbers to vote off whoever they like. But JT tips off Brad that they're voting Sierra in an attempt to get Nuku to play an idol on her and eliminate Sandra, which they do, but they eliminate Malcolm instead. JT's only ally, and this tribe's only prayer in challenges. Naturally, everyone's pretty mad at JT, particularly the audience. His wild returnee season plans are much more fun when he's getting himself 
eliminated. Things look pretty bad for JT here because Sandra wants revenge for him single-handedly getting Malcolm voted out, but he finds an immunity idol, theoretically buying his safety for later. Sandra ends up exploiting the rift between JT and Michaela here by eating all the sugar from a coffee bar reward they won and pinning it on Michaela. I genuinely do not know how JT fell for this, however. I mean, he's an expert in using sugar. This tribe loses immunity because of course they do. And JT is so convinced that the tribe consensus is against Michaela because of the sugar debacle that he doesn't even bring his idol to tribal council. And Sandra, Michaela, and Jeff Varner send him packing in a vote where he couldn't have used his idol to save himself, even if he wanted to. It's just a wildly overconfident misread of his position in the tribe, but hey, wildly overconfident misreads and JT on returning seasons are Part and parcel. They go together like, well, I was gonna say sugar and coffee. Too soon? At number three is Jason in Survivor Micronesia, who went home with an idol at final eight. We should all aspire to the level of unearned confidence that Jason has. I mean, he called himself a godlike player the night after he fell for a fake idol, which was just a stick with a face on it, and insisted his only ally embarrassingly play it. Well, I guess in his defense, he never said he was one of the good gods. The round after Eliza leaves, Jason is again the target. And despite him being objectively on the bottom, he actually steps down during an endurance challenge on the promise from the rest of the tribe that they witty please not vote him out. Now, Parvati and Suri would never break a promise on Survivor, so they end up shifting the target to Ozzy, and Jason survives this vote by sheer dumb godlike luck. At the auction at final eight, Natalie wins the ability to send someone to exile and obviously chooses Jason, still very much on the bottom. This theoretically should have been a blessing in disguise because he actually finds a real idol at exile this time. Oh, so that's what they look like. An actual prop on a multi-million dollar production airing during prime time on network TV. Jason's newfound idol proves to be a bit of a problem for the women who now want Jason to go next. So they send in Natalie to convince Jason he's safe. She somehow manages to convince Jason that her sending him to exile was actually a strategic move to benefit him and that the women are targeting James next, and that Jason, a guy who's been in the crosshairs for two votes in a row and who just got sent to exile because no one likes him, putting an even bigger target on his back, is safe. Natalie's argument to Jason was paper thin as well. She sells Jason on the idea that the women are going after James for his challenge abilities, a guy who has an injured finger and whose challenge capabilities have basically been diminished to zero, as a result. Props to the Black Widow Brigade and particularly Natalie. They successfully convinced Jason that he was in the majority when it was painfully clear he was not. At Tribal, Jason opts to sit on his idol instead of playing it. The Black Widow Brigade split votes between him and James and completing his arc of being Aussie but just worse, Jason similarly goes home with an unplayed idol in his pocket. Truly godlike gameplay in the sense that someone's gotta be the god of stupidity. At number two is James and Survivor China sitting on two idols at the final seven. No list of idol goofs would be complete without James, a guy whose idol snafu is so legendary in Survivor lore, it's regularly referenced as the ultimate cautionary tale. They even trotted him out during the season 36 reunion just to remind him that him not playing his idols is like Hall of Fame dumb. Jason, are you taking notes? This is how you attain godlike status. In Survivor China, James was part of the majority on the Fei Long tribe, but a weird swap sent him and Aaron to Jean Hu, where they were sitting ducks. As the de facto leader of Fei Long, Aaron was sent home first, leaving James in a rough spot. Fei Long wins the next reward challenge and gets to kidnap one Jean Hu member for the afternoon, and they obviously pick James. 
on this reward, Todd pieces together that the idols are hidden in the set decoration this season, and he retrieves, then gives James the Faelong idol, instructing him to idol out Jamie at their next tribal council. Now, Jean Hu actually doesn't go back to tribal council, but when James returns to the Jean Hu camp, he realizes that they have yet to retrieve their camp's idol, so he goes ahead and grabs that one, too. Fast forward to final seven. James has rejoined Fei Long, and they've picked off two members of Jean Hu and their own ally Jean Robert. James is dead set on going Fei Long strong the rest of this season and just picking off PG and Eric. And yeah, duh, of course he is. If James makes it through this single round, he could play an idol at six, play an idol at five, win one immunity, and be in the final three, where he would likely clean house with the jury votes. James repeatedly harps on his tribe mates not to bite the apple, that is, give in to temptation to turn on one another. They bit the apple. They ate the whole bunch. At final seven, James should have known he would be the target. His idols were public knowledge, as was their upcoming expiration. He at least had a hunch, since he brought both his idols with him to Tribal Council. But he was convinced that Todd, Courtney, Amanda, and Denise would play in his best interest and let him punch his ticket to Final Four. Instead, they sent him home with two idols in his pocket, a feat which would not be repeated for 24 seasons. James reportedly will not eat apples to this day. Oh, the At number one is Chris Noble in Survivor Ghost Island, who sat on his idol at final 13 and went home. Now, Chris is widely regarded as the best Survivor rapper, but his strategic game is questionable. To this day, I do not know what Chris was thinking. Either he was trying to pull off the heist of the century, or he didn't really understand what was going on. Possibly both? The story of Chris's idol sit is entangled in his rivalry with Dominic. Both started on Navidi, and almost immediately they developed an intense rivalry where it was clear they could not function on an island together. This would turn into a seven episode tease. Chris did not attend Tribal Council the entire pre-merge, so they never really got a chance to settle the score, despite being on a tribe together for 14 days. When the tribes come together at the merge, the long-awaited Chris and Dom showdown can no longer be avoided. This island's only big enough for one of them. It's like, well, not really like Rocky vs. Apollo Creed. Maybe Rocky vs. Tommy Gunn. Obviously, Dom outflanks Chris strategically, but a golden ticket to Ghost Island is randomly hidden in Chris's merge buff, where he was able to get a free immunity idol. Chris has the power to extend the idol's usage by risking his vote in a game of chance, and was able to lengthen the idol's validity to a second tribal council before losing his vote. Before tribal, Chris hatches a plan to split votes between Dom and Wendell in case of a Dom idol play, but Dom and Wendell manage to rally nearly everyone at camp to vote Chris out instead. At tribal, Chris makes the worst immunity idol decision of all time. In the confessional booth, Dom loudly says Chris's name, and when it's time to play advantages, Dom plays his legacy advantage, making him immune for the round, and Chris still opts not to play his idol. Why? If he doesn't need the idol today, he almost certainly won't need it at the next tribal council, because Dom will still be around and still be the target. But if you need it now, you really need it now. He knew he had at least two votes coming his way, his target was immune, and he had no vote. Chris ultimately went home 10 to two. Somehow it's fitting that Chris Noble made the merge having never attended tribal council, then got sent home without ever casting a vote, despite having guaranteed safety for that tribal council in his pocket. That's just Chris Noble though. His brain and his bars are on a different plane of existence than ours. Got nothing else for ya. If you want to be sweeter than JT's Sweet Tooth, like and subscribe and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.